Good morning, movers. Welcome back to Move Daily Fitness. It's Tracy Steen. Are you ready for this metabolic compound inferno? I hope you are. I had to rally for this one. I'm sure you're gonna have to do that as well. We've got a lot of fun formats coming up. I'm gonna give you a little screenshot right here. Just because there are so many, I'm gonna let you take a look at the different things that are coming up in this workout. Grab a variety of dumbbells for the workout today. That's all you'll need. All right, we'll start you with a warm up and end with a cool down. Hey, and don't forget, we do have our 30 solid fitness challenge coming up. We're gonna do a lot of coaching and fitness, wellness and nutrition. It starts June 1st, 2023. You can click or tap the card at the top of the screen or check the links in the description below and join today. All right, are you ready to do this workout? Let's move daily. I'm gonna do uh, high intensity intervals because the whole thing is gonna be intense. <laughs> Let's warm up. All right, single side circle. Yeah, this should be really fun. Switch directions. Our move daily guide, Kim, actually did a bunch of different format combinations for me. She's like, why don't you put this together with that or this together with that? And so when she said metabolic and compound, I'm like, okay, let's see what we can create here. Metabolic workout switch directions in my brain is you push until you can't, you rest until you can. So it's a good challenge cardiovascularly as well as on your muscles. All right, let's take it wide and open here. Of course, compound exercises are that multi-muscle and multi-joint. So we've got a lot working at the same time, all right? You do, as you saw, have a few little cardio interludes into this workout as well today. Should be a great calorie burner. All right, stay wide and touch your toes. Last one here. Now I'm getting down low to the ground for a side to side lunge. You can stay up high if you can't get down this low. Just rock it side to side. Drop those elbows toward the ground. Good, let's bring the feet a little bit closer together. We're gonna reach up here. Switch and reach here. Switch again. And one more here. Oh, a little crack of the back. That's it, double circles on the hands. And switch. Let's do a static lunge. Little pelvic tilt and we'll drop for 10 a leg. Stretching that back hip flexor here, warming up the quads. Last one on this side and switch. Pelvic tilt and drop nice and tall. Last here, good. Let's reach across, tap it. Up and over here. Good, and we'll finish right here. We're starting with that total body blast. 
four different exercises. They're on the screen right now. Take a look, get ready. And your format here is 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds in between, repeat for three rounds. Okay, we're starting with a kettlebell swing or a dumbbell swing. For dumbbell, you can hold it right here, 15 pounds. I've got a kettlebell that I'm gonna use, so why not? Wide stance. All right, we hip hinge and power up. Reach your hips back, pop it. that two squat, two squat jump sequence. If you don't want to squat jump, you can just squat the entire sequence. I'll do two and two, starting with your regular squat, then moving to the jump, your one, two, now jump for two. burpees you can walk this out to modify for low impact you could also elevate your hands on a bench or a box or couch I'm using push-up handles to support my wrists here we go jump it out and up at the top up down plank you can modify this from the knees or go right from the hands and toes alternate Okay, good. Round two, back to my swing. Again, you can use a 15 pound dumbbell between the legs. I've got my kettlebell and hinge and pop.
Moving into that squat and squat jump sequence. Two and two. Starting with your squat, feet shoulder width, drop it low, and two, now jump. Good, all right, into the burpee. Again, feel free to walk this out. You can stand and do jacks if you don't like the burpee. Here we go. I'm averaging about 15 there. Up down plank. Knees or toes. Alternate lead arm. And work. Up, isn't it? seconds. Reach your hips. Reach and pop. Nice. Squat to squat jump. Feel free to do all squat jumps if you want to kick it up more. Two and two. And jump.
burpees. All right, last burpee here. Let's work. Okay, last up down plank. Alternate lead arms. Here we go. more seconds. Push, push. All right, take a look at the screen. Here's your next format. That core crusher is starting with a plank shoulder tap you can mod this from the knees all right bum is down alternating taps here we go just 30 seconds per exercise allows you to put a lot of energy into each one because then we switch it up shoulders are right over those hands here don't rock your body Flip it onto your back. You got that bicycle right now. All right, opposite elbow to knee. Try to reach the elbow to the outside here. Let's go. And leg raises, hands are under the bottom to support to double leg lift or single for a modification. Here we go, slow, slow and up. Wanna make this more challenging? Just come that 45 degrees. Don't come all the way up to the top. Okay, you get a little reprieve up there. I mean, I like it personally, but <laughs> you want to make it harder. Always ways to do it. Nice. Give those knees a hug for a second. Into your Russian twist, frog style. Feet together, knees open. You're gonna twist, twist up here. Twist, twist, and sit up tall. I did this in our bar workout the other day. I thought it was a neat variation of the Russian twist. Reach, reach, sit up tall. All right, round two, back to your plank tap out. 
or tap shoulder tap rather. Here we go. And we tap and tap. up through those shoulder blades. Don't let that upper back sag. All right, bicycles. Low and slow on this one. Nice control. And we reach here and here. Push your back into the ground. Hug those knees, get ready for your leg lifts. All right, hands under your bottom if you wish. Straight leg lifts, and we lower. that Russian twist with the frog. Really lean it back, reach the elbow to the ground, and we reach, reach up and lift. Round three, flip her back, back to your plank, shoulder tap, bum is down, and we lift and tap. And hug those knees, leg lifts, straight legs, and you lower. And up for your twist and reach. Frog position and lean it back. One, two, and sit and reach.
All right, last round here. Pop it up and tap. Abs. This, is, this is good. Here we go, and we reach, and we reach. lower. The bicycle's the hardest, isn't it? Let's work and lower. Last one here. All right. Nice and tall. Reach, reach, and lift. Okay, take a look at the screen. There's the next format and grab the weights that you need. For your lower body incinerator, you have 50 reps of those three exercises. I'm gonna start with squats and I think I'm gonna grab a 20 pound dumbbell for my 50 squats. 50 in a row, push until you can't, rest until you can, that's what I'm gonna do. And here we go, stay tall. Forty. <sighs> and there's my fifty. Grabbing fifteens for my fifty lunges. 
alternating 25 per leg. You could reverse lunge if you like that better. 25 a leg though, here we go. There's 10. Thirty, twenty more. Forty. Ten more for me. <sighs> Last for me. And 50. Let's work. Quick sit before the 50 glute thrusts. And I'll grab my 45 pound dumbbell. Oh, maybe my 50. Okay. You can do this from a bench or the floor. Just be careful putting that up on your hips. It's gonna make my pants dirty. I should have grabbed a towel. 50. Have a good handle on your dumbbell. One, two. There's 10, don't arch your back. Twenty. The rest for two seconds. Let's scratch my nose and up. Thirty. Forty. I'm slowing down. Ten more. And fifty. Okay. Good. Upper body's coming up next. Take a look at the screen. Woo. Starting with that chest press, upper body annihilator. <laughs> They're very graphic names. All right, on your back, press it up. And we're gonna lift the hips at the same time so everything is up and everything is down just like this. Over the chest, not the face or neck.
flip it over for that renegade row. Bear walk in. All right, so row left, row light, right, and then bear walk in. I'm using 15s. And we row up, switch, up, walk it in, 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 back, back, and row. Row, you can put your hands on the ground and just use one dumbbell if that feels better on your wrists. Or also, alternately, feel free to stand and do a bent over row if you don't like this on your wrists. I'm gonna take 115 for my plie overhead tricep skull crusher. Nice and wide, everything is up, everything is down. We drop it low, press. Have a good handle on that dumbbell. You could also hold two dumbbells if that feels safer for you. Going to 12s for my bicep curl. Okay. Hands are up. Shoulders back. In and out curl here. So we curl in, then we curl wide. That's it. Targeting two different heads of the bicep here in a slightly different area. I'm gonna go back to my 15 for my push press for shoulders, like a little pop press. You can either slightly squat the knees and push, or you can add a slight pop to keep your core engaged. So you're here. I'll call half. Should have started with the other arm. Last one here. Nelly, that was heavy. Switch. Chest press. Okay. One more round here. Add that glute bridge and press over the chest and down. Keep up your pace if you can, push. Let's go, challenge those muscles. Whew. 
Nice. Flip it for that renegade row. And you can bear hop if you want or walk it in again. Or standing bent over row. Plank position. And we row, switch and row, walk it in. seconds. Oh, fire on those tries with the 15. Ribbon 12s for my in and out bicep curl. Palms are up, elbows are in. Knees are soft. Take a look at the screen. There's your last format. We're moving into Tabata. Skaters and jumping lunges. We're alternating those two. Stay low. You're here. All right, low impact is just a tap. into jumping lunges. You can reverse lunge to mod. I'm gonna add a hop in the middle of mine. You don't have to. Let's work. Back to skaters. Okay. Thank you. 
I'm averaging about 15 lunges. I'm gonna try and stay in that frame there. Skate. Jumping a lunge. One more of each. <sighs> Last one here. All right, then a 20 second rest before our next Tabata. Our next and last. Oh, okay. Rest for 20 seconds, walk that out. You've got high knees and frog squats coming up next. All right, high knees, mod right here for low impact. Frog squat, low impact will be here. Count your squats. for me. I'm aiming for that for the next number of rounds. High knees. Frog squat. Drop low, wide stance. Halfway, I'm on target. Ah, 15. All right. Up to high knees again. Almost there, folks. Push now, let's go. And frog. Ah, 
16. Okay, last round. I'm gonna challenge myself to get at least 16 next time. Let's go. All right, one more frog. I'm gonna go fast. Here we go. Halfway. Sixteen. 17, three, two, one, and done. You live daily, hiya, in your metabolic compound inferno. That was good, that was fun. Whew. Nice to start with high intensity and end like that. I like that, with the strength in between. Abs will feel that tomorrow, no doubt. Join for a quick stretch if you can. Don't forget to be subscribed to this channel and tap the little bell icon and it sends you a reminder when new workouts come out. Good times, had by all. Let's go into pigeon here. Stretch that out. Oh, good. I liked that combination. <laughs> Funny names, hey? I'm like Googling, how to, what's an adjective for in, you know, inferno or crazy or difficult or challenging? <laughs> There's a lot of adjectives. Uh, anyway, just trying to make it fun and different. Switch things up, you know. I think that's important for adherence to exercise. Let's switch legs. I did a coaching call recently in the membership where we talked about uh, adherence to fat, uh, like um, fat loss trackers, like MyFitnessPal or Lose It or something like that, and what causes adherence. And do people who actually stick with it get better results? Of course, all of the studies show that they do. If they stick with it, they are going to lose weight faster, they're gonna get fit faster, like all of the things. Because if it can be tracked, it can be measured, and then you have that element of accountability, right? The thing is, is that people dwindle off. They lose the motivation to track, they lose the motivation to be consistent with that because it is tedious, slightly monotonous, right? To remember to go to your app and track it and look at it but it's very telling when you look at the studies to see if people are more successful if they track their food or log their weight, if they'll be more successful in their endeavors toward their targets, and the answer definitely is yes. So I guess the question has to be for you then, is that the type of person you are? Or would something like tracking or weighing yourself be more of a hindrance to you and your journey? People are in both camps, no question. This will not be for everyone to track and to log and to monitor because if you've had maybe even a previous disordered eating past, um, perhaps you've you know dieted too much and you got obsessed maybe with numbers and tracking, it may not be a healthy way for you to go about losing weight. In which case there are so many other ways that you can do it. One that is very loving and uh, very intuitive, of course, is that whole intuitive eating process and learning to trust yourself and learning to listen to your body and notice your hunger and fullness signals. Those things are take more time and a little bit more concentration and effort, I think, to learn that art of paying attention and honoring the body. When you're tracking, you, you don't have to think about that as much, right? You can sort of be mindless about how you're feeling and just trust the numbers. So I think there's value in both, I really do. And what I think about tracking is that it's a good learning curve, right? You're gonna learn a lot if you decide to go down that macro tracking path. You're gonna learn which foods are which macronutrients, which foods have higher micronutrients, right? Which foods balance you and make you feel good. When you track, you can manage and you, it tells a story. Right, when you're intuitive, you're trusting more feeling and, and your gut instinct and you know the byproduct of what you're doing. You're trusting that more. And so again, value in both. I think, this is what I do. 
I I've spent my time tracking years ago. So, and just because I've looked at so many food diaries, I'm very knowledgeable now about what's in certain foods, how much has how much protein and carbs and fats. Like I know all of that just automatically. And so now I can take that knowledge and apply it to my intuitive process. I'm going to stop when I'm hungry or stop when I'm full, eat when I'm hungry. I'm going to honor my body. I'm not going to overfill it because that doesn't feel good. And I don't feel good when I do that. I'm going to pay attention to you know, if, am I sad? Am I anxious? Am I hungry? Am I mad? What am I? Right. And not just trust the tracking that says, Oh, it's time to eat. You better eat. I'm going to pay attention more. And then when I do go to eat, I know which foods to implement. So that's my process. Um, and again, different journey for everybody, right? So you got to go on your own journey and figure that out for you. Lucky for you, we do have that 30 solid challenge coming up this June, which is going to talk all about these things. So if you're interested, click or tap right there, join us. It starts June, 2023. Um, if you're seeing this at a later date, sorry, but it was only in June. Next one's in November though. So pay attention to that and join our next time. All right. See you in the next workout.